Speckled sea trout are one of the most tastiest sought after inshore game fish that there is down here in the low country, all the east coast and southeast for that matter. And in today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to target these fish, what baits to use, and what tackle to catch them on. Now I'll tell you guys, there's a plethora of baits and lures that you can use to catch these fish, live bait and artificial bait as well. But I'm gonna show you some of my top artificial baits that I use to target these fish. All right, so starting out first and foremost, I like to throw top water baits first thing in the morning if it's cloudy overcast conditions or if I'm fishing during these major uh, periods. Now a couple of the top water baits that I like the most are these Miradine Papa mullets. I happen to be uh, a big fan of this pink color. It's, brow it's bright, it's loud, it screams, come and eat me. It's got a nice concaved head. This thing's gonna chug through the water and get some really nice attention and not to mention, it's got some really, really nice, loud, high quality rattle beads in it. Uh, my next second favorite top lure to throw is this uh, Hidden Super Spook Junior. I got a couple different colors that I throw. Uh, this thing is a really nice walk the dog design and it will definitely grab some big trout attention. Uh, if you get on an incident where you're getting some hits on top water but nothing seems to connect, it might not be a bad idea to downsize. This is the Zara Puppy. Um, this is a very small Hidden uh, bait. It's about an inch smaller than your Super Spooks. The hooks are a little bit smaller, so you might want to change those small hooks that they come with to uh, something a little bit bigger. I got a little bigger uh, saltwater treble hook on here, but this thing right here will absolutely get inhaled, and there's no way that these uh, trout can miss the hooks on this little guy right here. Staying with the hard bait theme, uh, the Miradine 17 and 27 MR. This is a really nice, slow sinking, suspending style twitch bait. This thing is gonna grab a reactionary bite every single time. You basically just cast this guy out. It casts an absolute miles aerodynamic. It's unbelievable how far you can throw these things. Let it hit the water for every second that goes by. This thing is gonna sink down one foot. So just get an idea of the water depth you're fishing and um, the, the water column you're wanting to bring this through and start twitching this thing. I would not throw this thing if you're fishing in and around um, heavy structure like any type of grasses, oyster beds around docks, down trees because this will get snagged up and these things are not cheap. But if you're fishing out in any kind of an open flat uh, where you have a couple feet of water, that's gonna be a really good bait to use uh, to throw and cover water. This is the 17 MR, just slightly smaller and they even make a 37 which is even bigger than this. Now, something my Texas guys like to throw all the time, and it's actually effective down here in the low country waters, and that's these Paul Brown lures. Now, this is the Storm lure. This isn't the Paul Brown, but the Storm looks just like these Paul Browns. It's, it's basically just like a Miradine. It's a slow, swinking, slow sinking twitch bait. It's worked just the same, just kind of darts erratically. It grabs that reaction bite out of these trout but they're a little bit softer. So they've got a nice uh, hybrid design where you can bend them, you can work them like a hard bait, but they also are nice and squishy. So when the trout goes to bite this, it thinks it's biting into flesh and it will more than likely stay with that uh, bite as opposed to letting go like they could on a hard bait. And here's the original Paul Brown. Uh, Miradine actually bought them out, but the Paul Brown uh, packaging still stays the same. Um, these things are great. I'm going to do a couple videos fishing with these guys and prove to you that this is not just a Texas bait. This is an any state that, that you can catch spotted sea trout bait. All right, so moving on. Let me flip the camera around because I got a lot of soft plastics to go over. So starting up here at the very top, this is also a nice topwater bait. This is a Z-Man bait. It's called a Pop Shad. Uh, I basically have it rigged up with an offset worm hook. Um, you don't have to throw any weights on this hook because it is going to just kind of sit on top of the surface and you're going to work it just like you would a pop and mullet, just kind of plugging it along. It's got a nice, soft, squishy, uh, uh, elastic material that Z-Man Z is known for. It's very, very stretchy. Um, but just know that during high flow 
uh, periods, this thing right here will not work great because it's so light, it won't stay coming back towards the boat this way. It tends to get sideways and get a little bit wonky. So if you're looking to throw something very, very shallow that doesn't make a big splash or presentation or throw something around lower current periods, this pop shad is dynamite. So let's start up here with our exposed jig heads. I got a couple different ones laid out. This one at the very top is an eye strikes new product. This is their swim bait eye. It's one size bigger than your traditional trout eye. The trout eye is a two watt hook size. The swim eye is a three O hook size. I got them paired up with the top one here is paired up with a three inch, a uh, three inch minnow Z. I have just a little underspin on this. Uh, this is another Z-Man product. These little guys right here, you can basically see how I just got it jammed in. You can stick this into any, any soft bait, soft plastic, and it just adds a little bit more flash. So if you're just gonna swim this thing through the water column and aren't focused too much on bouncing it on the bottom, this is a great way to grab attention with this little underspin right here. A lot of guys like to put them on the end of the tail. I don't because when you do that, it weights down the tail and you don't get that kicking action. So when you put it under the belly just like this, you get a little bit of both worlds. Below that here is the same bait, but I got it paired up with a diesel minnow. Diesel minnow is a four inch bait. It's the one that's got the cavity busted up, or uh, opened up, just like I talk about in some of my videos. Um, you can fish it on an open exposed head, just like this, or you can fish it weedless. Stepping up my profile a little bit bigger, this is the redfish eye. This is a, this is a larger hook size here. Um, we're starting to step into a 4.0 hook size now, and I've got that paired with a five inch uh, swim bait. This is uh, Z-Man's um, diesel minnow in the five inch. They also make a seven inch as well. If you're going to go with a seven inch bait, you need to really step up uh, to the uh, striper eye by eye strike. Now guys, I do have plans on putting out a video that's going to cover every single lure that eye strike has. I'm going to talk about how I like to use it down here to fish effectively in these low country waters, but realistically you could use these eye strike hooks anywhere in the world. I know David's partnered up with Z-Man to put these materials out all over the place and they are using them in India, Australia, all over Europe, all over Asia, and they're catching fish. It's just flat out a fantastic product. So there you go, here's a larger bait profile. Going weedless now, this is the Texas side. This is a 3.0 hook size. This is a, my go-to 3 16 ounce weight here. I've got it paired up with a diesel minnow. This is the, uh, the sexy penny color. And I'm just showing you guys some variations of colors that Z-Man makes. These are all gonna be Z-Man soft plastics and a combination of Z-Man hooks and eye strike hooks as well. I'm a huge fan of the way this, uh, this bait swims on that uh, pivoting head just like that. It's got tons of action and then when you stop and bounce this thing on the bottom, it does a headstand just like that puts that tail straight up in the water. The current's gonna move it around just a little bit if you're dead sticking it. And as soon as the fish comes to bite, bang, they're immediately met by that hook right there. This is a killer bait right here. I like to throw this thing when I'm in and around structure. And I'll show you my next bait that I use when I'm throwing hard and heavy on top of structure. So the lure, this is the hook. This is the, uh, the Z-Man SWS chin lock. SWS stands for their saltwater line. It's basically a belly weighted off, or sorry, a belly weighted offset worm hook. Just like the bass fishing guys do, it's, but it's basically a saltwater product. I have this thing rigged up and married up with the uh, slam shady color. This is the diesel minnow. This is the official salt strong color that has absolutely taken over the world. They're sending this product everywhere and it's catching fish everywhere you go. Now, another option that I've been going with a lot lately is the Z-Man Pro Bullets. Now, the Pro Bullets is slightly different than the chin lock in the fact that you can get a heavier weight with the Pro Bullets. These uh, hooks are all basically the same, but you get more weight options and more size hook options in the Pro Bullets. Um, this happens to be a quarter ounce on a two watt hook size. You can get three, four watt hook sizes in varying weights. So it gives you a little bit more um, dynamic range if you're trying to throw a very specific lure at a specific weight if you're battling different types of finicky fish or if you're battling different types of current conditions where you need more weight to get down to the bottom. So let's talk about my shrimp imitation um, options. 
I like to marry up these shrimps. This is a sh shrimp Z as I called them in the video, or you can call them a shrimps. It's another Z-Man product. Z-Man also makes an easy shrimp, but I happen to like these because they have these little appendages. It looks like a little shrimp. It's got little tails. It's got little antennas. This thing is very, uh, very flexible. It comes alive. It's very active in the water. And you can fish it a couple different ways. You can fish it on an open exposed jig head, just like this 1 8 ounce trout eye. Or you could throw it weedless on a SWS chin lock. Now this is the 2 aught size chin lock. This is the smaller one. It's not the standard 3 inch or 3 aught chin lock that I would throw with a 4 inch bait. This is a little bit smaller. And here's the cool thing you guys. When I like to throw my popping corks to grab fish that way, I usually marry up a popping cork with a shrimp. And the reason I like to do that is because in the waters that we fish, you need to put out vibration, you need to make noise, you need to get fish's attention, especially once this algae starts to bloom and our water conditions go from three, four foot clarity back down to six inches. So any way that you can get attention out in the water and get these fish to take a look and come on over to investigate, the better. Now I do a pop and I throw these under a popping cork because the popping cork flat out makes noise. It allows me to suspend the bait uh, in a specific water column that I want to attract these trout and it works. It's an absolute trout killer. Um, these VMC hooks that are on these um, eye strike trout eye jig or trout eyes are phenomenal. They don't bend out. I've never had any issues. I never had any hook issues with these uh, with these baits. So. That's why I'm a big fan. It has nothing to do with me being on the iStrike I team. It's just, I believe in this product. I've been using it long before they even asked me to come on board. Um, so that's on the open exposed trout eye. If you get yourself in a situation where you're wanting to fish or float your rig tight over structure, go with a weedless setup just like this. And what that will allow you to do is allow this thing to move across the oysters and slightly bump the bottom and not get hooked up. If you take that hook point and just barely skin hook it like I have here, you won't get dangled up and snagged up. I have lost a lot of gear. I have seen so many, uh, on so many trips, I have seen so many popping corks with um, hooks embedded into oyster beds where guys just get them snagged up and they break it off and that's a $10 bill. You guys can save yourself a lot of money if you're fishing in and around heavy structure with a cork by going weedless. This is something that I don't think a lot of people think about. Um, they just go one track mine. So, and another thing too is you're not going to lose a lot of fish when you fish with these um, these bell these uh, the lures that have that belly slit in them because as this fish goes to bite and it compresses down, that hook gets exposed very nicely, and that lure rides or sorry that hook rides in the belly of that bait and allows for that fish to get a mouthful of hook. So don't count these weedless out if you're under, if you're using anything under a popping cork. And the same for um, soft plastic swim baits or these paddle tails. These paddle tails work perfectly fine under a popping cork too. The popping cork is really just a delivery device that you're going to use to allow a certain bait to float across a certain water column. You can throw anything underneath one of these things and get out there and catch fish. Now on the spirit of putting out vibration, making noise. There's a couple baits that I use. I don't use a lot, but if I'm, if I'm fishing around specific areas where I know I don't have a lot of oyster beds, if I'm trying to cover an insane amount of water on a flat, I'm on a big flat, I know there's trout out there, but I don't know where they're at. I can rip a paddle tail and get that tail spin in vibration. I can get the underspin that I showed you guys um, on the, uh, this one right here. This little guy right here will help me get some attention and cover water. But another product that I use that I don't talk about a lot are the chatterbaits and the willow blades. These Z-Man chatterbaits make an absolute ton of noise. I've used them to catch piles and piles of flounder. Uh, I actually did a video one day showing you guys exactly how to catch flounder with this in a very specific spot. Um, but these things vibrate, the tail kicks, it makes a lot of attention and it gets the bite. The chatterbait is going to give you more of a low frequency vibration, more of a bum 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 bum. Whereas the willow blade is a smaller blade and it's going to give you a tire, a tighter, higher frequency vibration. So really either one of these catch fish. Um, it doesn't matter if you leave the skirt on or take the skirt off. It's this little blade up top. That's really going to do the work for you. It's going to get that vibration out and get these fish over interested. 
So these are some of the artificial baits that I like to use to get out there and target these, uh, these fish. And by all means, you live bait guys, stick to your live baits. If that's what you're interested in, if that works, what, what works for you, go for it. But at the same time, try a plastic artificial every now and then from time to time. You will be amazed at the fish that you can catch by using these artificials. Just get a little confidence in your artificials. Start off by throwing something very simple like a three or four inch paddle tail on a, uh, on a hook, on a, on a weedless hook, I would say, and start catching some fish, build that confidence, and then start stepping into this artificial world. But if that's not you, then that's fine. I have no problem with that. I will be doing a lot of videos this summer of me out there fishing with live bait. I like to fish with shrimp, I like to fish with mud minnows, and I like to fish with mullet. I'll actually get out there and I'll show you guys how I like to throw my cast net, how I like to target um, certain areas where bait are uh, for my trip. I'm not a big fan of going to the bait shop and buying bait. Um, sometimes when I'm in a pinch, I will. There's a couple really good bait shops around here too that I'll talk about um, that have just killer prices, killer customer service down here in the uh, low country in Savannah, Georgia area, both. Uh, so I will get some content out there for you guys. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be throwing all Z-Man plastics all year long. I don't wanna be known as, the, as just the Z-Man guy. Uh, I wanna give you guys really a nice wide variety of videos coming out. Um, so that is the bait and the lure. So let's talk about the terminal tackle real quick and then I'll get on to the most important part and that is where to find these trout. All right, so as far as the tackle goes, I like to throw a seven foot length medium action fast tip rod. That rod at seven and seven and a half feet is going to give me enough uh, length to really get a cast out there and cover a lot of water. And with that fast tip action, it's going to allow me to feel the bite and keep everything nice and sensitive. The reel I like to use, I am really hooked on these Daiwa Fuegos. This is the 2500 series reel. Uh, they make two different versions. One has a higher gear, uh, a higher gear rating than the other. I say go with a higher gear rating. This has 22 pounds of drag for a 2500 series reel. It's unbelievable. This thing is an absolute monster. Um, I have it paired up with 10 pound Power Pro braid and I usually throw a 20 pound fluorocarbon or 20 pound mono leader. Sometimes if I want to be cheap, I throw the mono because fluorocarbon is about three times the price of it. So. Last but not least, let's talk about where we are going to locate these trout. The most important part in this video segment, I guarantee it. All right, you guys, so like I mentioned before, locating these fish and putting yourself in front of feeding fish is the most important part. It doesn't matter if you're a guy that has an unlimited budget and you can buy the nicest gear and have 5,000 tackle boxes loaded down full of all the best stuff, you are not gonna get out there and successfully catch fish if you don't know how to put yourself in front of feeding fish. Now, I've done videos on this before. Actually, I'll pop the link right up here above me uh, to the video where I talk about how to locate fish using bait current structure nearby depth change, my big four. Um, so I won't go too much into that, but I'll tell you some of the spots and the types of areas I like to look for to find these trout uh, in the spring. Now, what you guys need to know is if you haven't already experienced a tough winter bite, these trout are schooled up tight in the winter they are usually deep and they're holding hard and close to structure. As this water temperature warms and we start getting above 65 degrees, these trout are gonna come out of their winter patterns and they're gonna start spreading out. Right now, most of them are pushed kind of to the backs of these creek systems and you're not able to find them out in the sound or areas of the sound where you used to. But as this water temperature warms <coughs> and this bait starts to return, the mullet and the shrimp both, these trout are gonna start pulling back and getting back into these uh, spring, summer, and fall pattern areas. Now, some great areas that I like to target trout on these warm-up months that, like we're having right now is creek mouths. These trout are gonna position themselves in the creek mouths, hanging around oyster points, grass points, and ledges and guts that are within these creek mouths. So as that bait comes and goes in and out of that creek system, they're gonna be right there in front of the conveyor belt and they're gonna be ready to eat. So if you find yourself a nice creek mouth that has a good amount of uh, tidal flow and that has grass and oysters, you're gonna set yourself up for a good spot to catch these fish. Now, you can go on Google Satellite or Google Earth and check out these satellite images and you can zoom in and you can figure out what black spots are, black spots or round spots are usually oyster beds and you can kind of find these areas just by looking at a map and save yourself a lot of time. But I tell you guys, nothing beats getting out on the water at dead low tide creeping around, take your time, don't get your boat stuck anywhere, 
um, and take mental notes or drop pins on your Google map or drop pins on your chart plotter of these areas that have all these things that I talk about, especially from that video I mentioned last time. Uh, so get out there and do a little, um, a little time on water. I tell you guys, nothing beats time on the water. Uh, if you're one of those guys that you don't have a lot of time to get out there and fish and, and really pattern where these fish are, check out that video, bait current structure, nearby depth change. Do a little bit of homework about three or four days before your trip. Pick out a handful of spots, maybe five or six spots, and then go and try those spots. And I guarantee you, you are going to catch fish. That video is, is, is dynamite. If, 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 you've, if you haven't got a chance to see it, yeah, I'm telling you guys, it's really good. Um, so that's it, you guys. It's, it's all about getting the right type of bait, using the right type of equipment. But more importantly, get out there where these fish are. That is the 90-10 rule. 90-10 rule means 90% of the fish are hanging out in 10% of the water. So when you get out there on the water and you're thinking, man, I don't even know where to go, you'll have an idea where these fish are gonna be using bait current structure nearby depth change that falls in line with that 90-10 rule. So that's it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Uh, this is gonna be part of a new series that I'm calling Back on Land. It's gonna be a video log style series. This is uh, Back on Land is gonna be everything that happens in and around the Low Country Fishing brand when I'm off the water. It's not gonna be a lot of high, uh, higher editing style filming work like that, like, like my fancy videos are. It's gonna be just kind of me doing a lot of product review, me doing some classes and courses that are like this, some boat maintenance stuff I'm gonna talk about trailer and tips and techniques and uh, stuff that happens at the dock, etiquette, uh, just a whole bunch of stuff. And all of these, um, um, all these episodes and content that I'm gonna be putting out, you guys, is coming from you. This is all the stuff that you guys put in the comments uh, of the video. So by all means, keep all that good stuff coming. If there's anything that you wanna see or you want me to cover, drop it in the comments section below. And any and all the, the stuff that I showed you guys today on this video will be in the video's description as well. Uh, it's a hyperlink directly to Amazon, uh, so you don't have to really look it up. Just click that link, boom, it shoots you right over there to it. So that's it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, you guys. Tight lines.